What's up? Hello, friends, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, back with Kelly. We have an amazing workout for you to start off your week. It's going to be, as I described it, amazing. So it consists of four circuits of two exercises each. We're going to do one circuit for four minutes. So alternating back and forth between two exercises for four minutes. <clears throat> then we rest, and then we do another one, four minutes, back and forth, rest, another one, four minutes, back and forth, rest, another one, uh, four minutes, back and forth. So, good news is we're done in uh, about 18 minutes, 16 minutes of work. Let's assume we're going to go like 30 seconds in between, 45 seconds in between each circuit. If you need to rest a little bit longer in between each circuit, by all means, go for it. But uh, generally, I'm going to recommend men resting uh, no more than about a minute, minute and a half, uh, just to, to keep it moving, keep your heart rate up. So again, uh, four circuits, two exercises each. Our first circuit, we're going to do a core exercise, a pike, and a lower body exercise, a crossover lunge. Again, alternating those two uh, back and forth for four minutes. On the pike, we're going to do 15 repetitions. On the crossover lunge, we're going to do 10 on each side. Brendan, questions, comments? Uh, Kelly's going to show you the pike and the crossover lunge. I'm going to show you some modifications for each, uh, and then I'll, I'll jump in. So, all right, good, perfect. So, four minutes starting with a pike. Now, Kelly is also using a single slider. Are you mark it, set, go. So, she's using a single slider, makes it a little bit more challenging. But we're doing this in case you're working out with a sibling or a kid, a spouse, and you only have one pair of sliders. So, problem solved. So, notice the legs are staying straight. Elbows are straight. She's not bending her elbows. All right, the, the shoulders staying above the hands. She's dropping her hips down at the bottom, but she's never dropping below parallel with the floor. So what we wouldn't want is for her hips to drop so low that it starts to like really put pressure on the low back. So we want to avoid that. So she's keeping the legs straight as she can, bring the hips up, almost in like a think of like a mountain top position, and then back down like a push up position. So 15 of those, which are not fun. Uh, you might not be aware. But uh, if you've done pikes here on the turf before, Kelly's going to the next level because doing them on the turf is way, way worse than doing them on the carpet. Next, we're doing a crossover lunge. Now, the weight is staying on the front heel. So she's not coming up on her toe. The weight's staying on her front heel. Now, the more she steps over towards me and the more she steps over to the side, so the more she's moving laterally, the more she's going to work the glutes, so you'll feel it a little bit more in your butt, the more you're stepping aside. If for some reason this bothers your knee, well then you can do a couple of variations that I'm going to show you in just a moment. So we're going 10 on each side here, and then we're going to go back to the pike. So on the pike, if you don't have sliders or you want a modification, so you got a couple options. One option is right here, no sliders. I've got my hands below my shoulders. I'm going to tuck my head between my shoulders, hold it for about one, two seconds, come back down. Bring it up, hold it for two, come back down. That's one option. I'm going to do five of these, and then I'm going to move on and show you. If you have wrist issues, you can do the same thing from the, or, uh, from the elbows. Tuck your head, hips up high, come down. Another option would be to hold this point position, alternating, stepping out. So alternating, stepping out, back and forth. Another option would be to just hold a plank. So, we got that, and then cross over lunge. So you could step over like Kelly's doing. You could also 
Just go with a reverse lunge, like I'm doing right here. Alternating, stepping straight back. If the crossover lunge bothers your knee a little bit, you can try this right here. If you don't want to hold the weight, you can also, up, up high, you can also come right here and just do one leg at a time. A third option, or fourth option, I guess, technically, if your knee's really bothering you, switch to a single leg deadlift. Good news, we've got 20 more seconds here. So switch to a single leg deadlift. It's another option. So we're going back to that pipe. We got to get it in because we started. So 15 pikes and then we're done. Keep going. Next circuit, back, we're still singing core exercise, but now we're doing a, uh, an upper body exercise. We're gonna do a hand walkout, and we're gonna do a single arm, single leg, dumbbell row. All right, hand walkout, and single arm, single leg, dumbbell row. If you don't have a dumbbell, use a paint can, water detergent, gallon jug of water, backpack, loaded up the books, so we got options here. So four minutes, hand walk out. Now on the hand walk out, you want to focus on keeping the legs straight. So this might be easier to see. So uh, on the hand walk out, we're going for four, and then I'm sorry, three, three. I lied. We're going for three hand walk outs, and then on the rows, we're doing ten per side. Three hand walk outs, ten rows on each side. Got it. All right, let's go. So, hand walkout is kind of a similar movement to the pike in some ways. As far as, a lot of times you'll feel it in your hamstrings quite a bit. Now the further, notice how Kelly is reaching out in front of her shoulders. That's working the core a lot more. She's dropping down here, but never letting her hips drop to the point where it's gonna put pressure on her low back. So she did three of those. And then she's gonna do a row right here on the row. Right arm, that means right leg is up. Now if you need a little bit extra support, use like a foam roller or stand next to like a chair or couch or the wall, but you got something to help balance just a little bit. So from the side view here, her back's in a nice and flat position, meaning she's not rounded forward like this. You know, she's a little bit, she's 90 years old with her back rounded over. We don't want that. So posture's in a nice, good position. So left arm, she's pulling her left elbow right by her side. Pulling the left elbow right by the side. What she's not doing is she's not shrugging. A lot of people have a tendency to really tense up with their neck anytime they're doing any sort of pulling movement. We don't want that. That's not good. So hand walkouts again. So walking out, walk down like a push-up position. If you want to take it a step further, then just walk out a little more in front, walk, walk your hands out a little bit further forward. All right, and then back to 10 on each side here. Now, if you want to make this one more challenging, you could also 
Just lean forward a little more. Instead of being here, just kick that heel up. It's going to focus on balancing on this left. Like right now, I'm being challenged quite a bit to balance my left leg. All right, so 10 on each side. Also, if you need to, then just keep your back foot down on that row. That's a way to make it a little bit easier. So we only got a minute, 10 to go. Again, from the side, if you want to make it a little bit easier, keep your back foot down like this. The important thing though, your back should be in a neutral position. So you're like this, not just rounded forward. All right, so you don't want to just round forward. Five more seconds. Finish that set, you're on. We time that much better. So, all right, excellent work. Good news, we're halfway there. Two down, two to go. So, next round, we're gonna go with a, so grab a quick drink. Next round, we're going with a body saw and a rear foot elevated split squat. So the body saw, you're gonna need your sliders. And then with the rear foot elevated split squat, now Kelly and I are going to use this stand right here. Most people aren't going to have this at home. It's totally normal. Uh, just use like a step or even a chair or a couch, uh, love seat, you know, pretty much anything to prop your foot up. If there's just nothing available in, in that area, or if doing these with your rear foot elevated bothers your knee, to just do a, gen, a general like split squat from the ground right here. Just straight up, straight down. So if you can't elevate the heel, it's not a deal breaker. All right? So we're going to do 15 saws, body saws, and then we're going to do um, 10 rear foot elevated split squats. So 15 here, 10 on the rear foot elevated split squat. Let's do it to it. And mark it, set, let's go. So, Kelly's in a plank position. Her body is nice and straight and parallel with the floor. What you notice when she like drops, rocks back and forward, her hips never drop, which we don't want that. If your hips start dropping too much, it's gonna put pressure on your low back, just like with the pike and with the hand walkouts. All, anytime you're in this prone position, that's something you need to think about. You want to keep your back in more of like a neutral spine and not let your hips drop because it's going to put pressure on your, on your low back. So we don't want that. Now the further she slides back, the more she's going to stress her core. One more thing to point out, when she's doing that, notice her, her hips aren't coming up and down. A lot of people, instead of rocking back, they'll have their hips more just like bend forward. We don't want that. So in the rear foot elevated split squat, 80% of the weight is on her front leg. Her back leg's not really doing much of the work. So most of the work is being done by the front leg. Now, specific to the front leg, we want to keep the bulk of the weight in the heel. If you feel yourself coming up on your toe, well, that generally means you need, you're, you're making it more of a lunge and you're coming forward. Think of this, instead of like a lunge where you're lunging forward or backwards, this is more of a straight up and down movement. If you're looking, like I can even see in the camera, her upper body is moving straight up, straight down. And that's what we want. That's what this movement should be. Straight up, straight down, it's not forward or back. Here's a little secret. If you feel like your weight is coming forward, put uh, your front foot 
like up against a chair or something. And what will happen is that chair will actually block your knee and not allow it to come forward. So again, if you feel like, if you just feel like your, your weight keeps shifting forward, you can't do about it, can't do anything about it, um, stand next to like a wall or something that forces you to go up and down and it won't allow you to come forward. So she's doing a body stunt right here. I'm doing a modification. So if you don't have a pair of sliders, Here's your options. One, be a plank with a hip extension. What that looks like, down on the elbows, pick the leg up, pick the leg up. If the body saw bothers your back or shoulders, this may be the way to go. So, you go right there. You could go plank with a reach. Again, you've got options. So, Back to the spirit of the split squat. You can hold the weight like she's doing by her side, or right here, I'll do something to just show you a variation. Pull the weight right here, chest high. So you're dropping your back knee straight down. She probably did run six. You know I'm kidding. All right, so again, with that body saw, sliding back and forth. And on all these work, on all these circuits that we're doing today, you got to keep in mind on the, on the workouts we're doing every day, the uh, workout today, and like on Thursday, is more of a strength-focused workout. So don't stress over like trying to get as much work done as humanly possible. This is more on quality versus quantity. On our metabolic days, yes, those workouts, we want to be moving fast and hard as much as we can. While day like today, we're focused more on getting stronger and stimulating the muscles, which doesn't necessarily equate to working at 100 miles an hour. All right, last circuit here. Good news is you don't have to go far for this. We're going to alternate between a leg lift and a push-up. On the leg lift, we're going for 15. On the push-up, we're going for 10. Leg lift and push-up, so you don't need much from here. All right, 15 leg lifts, 10 push-ups. All right, Kelly's going to walk through it, and then I'm going to jump it out too. On your mark, get set, let's go. So, she is exhaling on the way up. As she brings her legs up, she's exhaling. Notice how she's picking her hips up at the top. Can you see her kind of like pushing the bottom of her feet up towards the ceiling? That's going to force those muscles to contract just a little bit harder. So to get up, to work those muscles better, one, exhale on the way up. Two, push up towards the ceiling. One last thing, she's got her hands underneath her hips. That's going to help keep her back in more of a neutral spine position. Another thing to add, when I said last thing, I didn't mean it, <laughs> she's got her head down. A lot of people have a tendency on leg lifts to have their head up in the air. Don't do that. That just causes you to tense up those muscles, those small muscles in your neck, which doesn't really do any good. Now we're going to push-ups. As you can see, we've got some textbook form going on right here. So ankle, knee, hip, shoulder, everything is in a nice and straight line. Her head's in a neutral spine position. So when she goes down, she's not like just dropping her, she's not like chicken packing as I call it. Her head's not dropping down. It's in a neutral spine position the entire time. 
All right, so back to those leg lifts. We're going to jump in here. Ten push ups. Now, on the push ups, if you need some modifications, things to keep in mind. One, you can go kneeling the entire time, you can do a kneeling push up. Okay? So, kneeling is one option. Instead of doing a full push up or a kneeling push up or the middle of the road, you can lower yourself down in a nice straight line and then kneel and push back up. Looks like this. Lower yourself down, kneel, push. So that's an option as well. We only got two minutes, 15 seconds. Wait, just kidding. A minute 15. Minute 15, we're done. Fifty seconds here. All right. Ten push ups, fifteen leg lifts. Other options on the push ups, <clears throat> maybe like kneeling. Lowering down, maybe like just another option. Doesn't make it better or worse. Just another variation. Maybe you do it from like the edge of a couch or the edge of a chair or uh, on like a small tabletop or something. Here we use like an 18 inch step. So if we're doing push ups from an incline, a lot of people here at the gym, we're using like an 18 inch step. So just uh, food for thought, something different to do. So wind it down. Finish the set you're on, and then we're all set. Kelly's knocking out these 15 leg lifts, and then we are done for the day. Excellent work, great job. All right, awesome work. Again, to recap, two exercises in each circuit. Four circuits, four minutes per circuit. Again, 16 minutes. Factor in a few minutes for rest. You're still done in under 20 minutes. You don't need hardly any equipment at all. We use a slider and a dumbbell today. Parting words of wisdom? It's Monday, new week, new goals. New week, new goals. I like it, I like it. New week, new goals. So make it happen, and we'll see you next time. Bye.